The key for today's video is going to be making sure that you guys can hear me. Because while yes, it may be quiet with me just sitting here, it's not a quiet ride. This is a very loud truck to drive. None of these door seams are sealed properly. Uh, it's got like the vents instead of AC, so it just blows air in here. Even when they're shut, they don't really shut properly. Um, they shut very well, but they're just like a little seam that still gets left. And it's just thin, like the whole truck is like minuscule, like there's not a lot to it. So when you're driving, you hear everything, it's loud. It's not horribly loud, but it's loud. And my biggest concern is that you guys won't be able to hear me. Today I'm gonna to be talking about what you guys can expect if you're looking to own two vehicles, or if you're kind of in the market to purchase a second one, or even if you're just thinking about it, like what it's been like for me, and what you guys can kind of expect if uh, you're trying to do the same thing. So this is a 1987 S10, and first and foremost, lots of people just think they can't afford two vehicles. This vehicle cost me $200 with 29,000 kilometers on it. It's got original paint, everything in here is the original. This is an armrest for Canadian tire. Everything's like stock on this, except for all the parts I've replaced, like brake lines and brakes and gas tanks and hoses and filters and all that. But like engine, transmission, all key components, the entire interior. This is a new headliner I bought from LMC Truck, and as you can see, I spent a lot of money on it, and it doesn't even work. So they sent me out a second one, and I never put it in last summer, um, but it looks to be exactly the same, and if I put in another headliner and it does this, I don't think I'm going to be too happy, because not only did this start hanging, but the glue doesn't catch, so you can't, like, you can't even push it back up. It's garbage. And everything in here is loose, so if you're hearing little noises, I'm sorry. But yeah, so people think they can't afford it. So this truck cost me $200, and yes, by the time I got it on the road, I was just over $1,000, but still, for just over $1,000, um, that's pretty good. Like, lots of people will spend a lot of money on a second car, or like a summer car, or something really nice, and they find it. If you just want like a nice, fun toy, you can get one for pretty cheap, as long as you have the time and you're willing to put in the time to, you know, make it uh, a good enough to be a daily. So we'll say that this truck got me on the road, we'll say $1,500, and I was driving this truck with 29,000 kilometers on it, the stock engine tranny, nothing big needed to be replaced, um, and it gets pretty good fuel mileage. So like, it's not like there's a huge V8 in this yet uh, that's killing all my gas, but it, it's, it's not horrible for me. And then you have the part with insurance. And yes, I have insurance on this, and it is uh, not like the full coverage like you would get if you had a brand new car. It's just like, I think liability, or I don't really remember what I put on it, but I didn't put the full thing on because like full replacement value of $200, like congratulations, you screwed yourself. So it's not full replacement, but the insurance, I put it on right now in April, and it's going till the end of the year because I don't bother canceling it because it just saves you pennies. Uh, so I just have it from now till the end of this year. It was $490, I believe, and that's because it's a second vehicle. So I have one vehicle in my name that's my full-time, like, my daily, that was my sub sliding across the back. Um, my daily is obviously my primary vehicle on the insurance, and then my secondary vehicle on the insurance is this guy here, which makes your insurance a lot cheaper. So all money aside, this is my scenario. Now this is coming from me owning a little, you know, imported sports car, my BRZ, and this old S10, which I'm gonna call a classic. It is not anything near, you know, old fancy classic cars. I understand that. And I never thought this truck was anything special. I know that these were just disposable little trucks. Uh, they were a dime a dozen, and they didn't really turn heads or anything like that. So for me, owning a little sports car uh, and then a classic car is kind of cool because in the summer when I go to shows, there's some shows where like you know they're full of little ricers, and if I go there with this, they, people just kind of go, "What the hell are you doing here? Like, why, why are you here with that truck?" Um, and there's shows where there's a lot of classic cars. And if you show up with your BRZ, people are like, yeah, that's great, but look at all these classic cars. So for me, it's been kind of cool because I can go both ways. So if I go to like a little rice or meat, I bring my BRZ and it's cool, everybody gets along, they love it. Uh, and if I go to more of like a classic cars kind of meat, hurry up, man. If I go to like a classic car meat kind of thing, I can bring the truck and people love that too. And there's also times where it's like Cars and Coffee uh, and Engineered Automotive is the one that I go to. And they have like everything comes out, like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, classic cars, new cars, everything you could ever imagine is at these shows. And so I switch it up and I bring a truck once and I bring my car the next time and 
it's really cool because people get to see, you know, both sides of me. It also gives me more stuff to work on. So, like, as a hobby, I enjoy messing with my vehicles. And my BRZ is new and doesn't really have problems. It just has things that I want to do to it, like put on wheels or put on an exhaust or do stuff like that. So that's all great, and I can do that to the car, but that's going to cost me a lot of money. Whereas with this, I can tinker with things for very few dollars. I can just mess around with things and make them the way I like and fix problems for cheap, like the belt blew on this truck. I needed a new belt. It didn't really blow, it just almost blew. Uh, the belt goes on this truck, and I need to get a new belt. And the new belt's, like, not that expensive, but it gives me a project. The rad went. The rad was, like, a hundred and something dollars. Cheap. And it gives me, like, a nice afternoon project. Replace the rad. Do things like that. Try and bring the paint back to life. It's, it's a good hobby, and it pays off. So you're not spending a lot of money on it. But you reward yourself with being able to say, wow, look at what I've done and look at this. And I sanded down all the rims on these on this truck, all four rims, sanded them down, repainted them, the color of the paint on the doors with the little black inserts. I polished up all the beauty rings and all the center caps and made it look as stock as possible. And it's just good to do, like, it just keeps me busy. It doesn't cost me anything, really. And... It, it's rewarding. I look at it and I go, this is what I've done and I feel good about it and it makes me happy and it, I have something to show for the time that I've put into this truck. So I think the biggest key point for me in this whole video was this is something that's cheap to work on and constantly be improving. Uh, something that, like little things that I have to do. The gas gauge on this, it only fills up to a quarter. So when my tank's full, it says a quarter. And once I drive through that first quarter tank, it says empty. So I don't know where my gas is at. I don't know if I'm at a half tank, like I don't, I don't know. So every time I go through the first quarter tank, I'm always at the pump putting in 20 bucks, 20 bucks. That's all it takes to fill the quarter tank. So like soon, because last summer I just dealt with it, but this summer I'm not having it. Uh, I'm going to have to rip this whole unit out and go in there and mess with that and fix it. And that's going to be probably an afternoon project because there's a lot that you have to do to get just to that little spot. And to me, I like doing that and it's cool and it entertains me and I love it. So if you guys are thinking about getting a project car, make sure you try and get something that won't break the bank unless you have bank to spend. If you have money to spend that'll get you something that you really, really dream of that is just as reliable as this truck, I would say go for it. But I didn't have a lot of money to spend and I got a truck with a six story, low mileage, and it was all good for me. But if you're looking for something to tinker on and mess with, I keep saying tinker. I feel like that's like the worst word. It just sounds so stupid coming out of my mouth. But if you're looking for something to mess with and you're looking for something that you can always be playing around with and have a reliable car on the side, definitely get a project car. Don't worry about the expense. Don't worry about anything. It gives you a good feeling of accomplishment and you get to see what you've done. And for me, I've been so thrilled ever since I got this truck. I love this truck as much as I love the BRZ. And you can say what you want about it being old and falling apart and loud and this and that. But I love this truck. And I'm sure if you guys buy a project car that you've been dreaming of for a while. And if you just put in the time, if you put in a summer's worth of work and that car comes out being brand new in your eyes, it's all worth it. So for me today, this video was more of a test to see if you guys can hear me when I'm driving the truck, um, if nothing else. But I'm going to cut the video here, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you later this week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.